ok we are back again. So, three phase power measurement right. So, in this case uh, in this case your what we what what uh, your what we have uh, will do it that basically for three phase power measurement we use two two watt meter method. So, in this case uh, uh, in this case we have used three watt meter is given generally in a watt meter you have a current coil this is actually current coil right and this is um, sometimes we call pressure coil or voltage coil. So, load may be balanced or unbalanced right and this side is your this side is your if you see in your laboratory this side when you do in the first year itself you will see that this side is marked as m and this side is marked as l right. The m is the main side that is the supply side this is called main and l is the load side that means this side that is why it is m l and l both are marked and this point this point sometimes this point sometimes is marked C and this point marks as V and this is called pressure coil and voltage coil. Current coil has negligible resistance basically it current passing through all the current passing through this your what you call or uh, your uh, this uh, current coil and this pressure coil actually it is the voltage coil. So, it may basically it is the voltage. So, suppose this is A and this is B and current flowing to this the phase A is I A and the voltage is actually it looks the voltage from here to here is your what you call it is your uh, same way it is connected we will see in the uh, your uh, next diagram right. So, basically it sees the line to line voltage. So, whenever whenever this uh, go for 2 watt meter method, but in this diagram in this diagram I have shown just one minute I have shown this your 3 watt meters right. So, this 1 watt meter is redundant it will measure 0 no need for 3 watt meter. So, this connection I have given intentionally just you think yourself that this watt meter will reach basically 0 if you go for a 3 watt meter. So, basically we need 2 watt meter method for measuring the and load may be star or delta balance or unbalanced does not matter we measure power using 2 watt meter method right and this is I am leaving up to you. So, whenever whenever you go for your 2 watt meter 2 watt meter method right. So, this is my this is my your what you call that uh, what me this is my watt meter and it measures the power P 1 a load is taken as a star say says angle is z angle theta. So, current flowing through this actually client current flowing through this is your I A this is your I A this is the phase A and voltage measures this right this voltage from here to here. So, voltage actually it will be V A B. Now, from our phasor diagram we have seen that if this is this is my A to N this is my your line current is equal to phase current. So, this is my V A N right and current uh, this is the voltage here I have taken capital A N instead of small n. So, here also you can write capital A N does not matter and the current I actually is lagging by an angle theta because this angle is theta right. So, this is angle is theta. So, so, now this is the line voltage, line voltage is V A B, V A B leads the phase voltage by angle 30 degree. So, this is my V A B and this angle is 30 degree right. Therefore, angle between this and this watt meter measures actually looks the line voltage here because it is pressure coil is connected here it is V A B because right and the current flowing through this is I A. So, angle between V A B and I A is, is 30 degree plus theta right. That means, this reading of the watt meter is P 1 then P 1 will be equal to it is magnitude V A B into I A into cos 30 degree plus theta right. So, if you similarly for other watt meter we will come to that. So, whenever you come to this one that your this phasor diagram if you see that V A B V N it is 30 degree theta angle between V A B and I A is 30 degree plus theta. Now, I A is equal to your I A is equal to it is V A N actually here it is uh, this diagram just hold on this diagram we know this this is I have marked it capital A N right. So, question is in between one between your current coil is there. So, basically this is nothing but your you can speak small a and you can small n also right. So, current I A I A actually is equal to your same actually V A N V A N right divided by your Z star or Z Y right. So, this is this way you can make it. So, here I have written capital N same thing same thing. So, that means here V A N angle 0 
upon z star right here also in the phasor diagram here phasor diagram also it means your v n v a n actually it is v a n same thing understandable right. So, this v n angle 0 so g, it is z y is equal to z angle theta. So, it will be i a will be v n upon z angle minus theta therefore, p 1 is equal to v a b i a cos theta plus 30 this is magnitude this is magnitude v a b actually is equal to your line voltage. So, it is v l right it is a line voltage and i l is equal to line current i l is equal to i a it is the line current this is line voltage and line current. So, it will be v a b i a cos theta plus 30 degree or we can write v l i l cos theta plus 30 degree this is equation 1 this is the reading of the your watt meter 1 right. Now, watt meter 2 if you go to the diagram again if you go to the diagram again. So, in this case it is voltage is what you call a b b c is marked let me move little bit upward right. So, in this case your current is here it is i c this current is your i c right this current is i c right what meter is placed here. So, line current is i c uh, and your voltage it looks at as a b c it looks at voltage c b right although b to c v b c v a b v b c v c is given, but it will be v c b because this is the phase c and this is connected to b. So, voltage should be v c b it means it sees the voltage v c b, but not v b c right. So, and the current is i c. So, if you if you draw the complete phasor diagram right if you draw the complete phasor diagram. So, this is the diagram. So, in this case earlier we have seen this is v a b this is your v n this angle is 30 degree this already we have seen before and this is i a right. So, i a lags from v n by theta similarly this is your this is your what you call i b this is your i b right uh, just let me move little bit upward just let me move. So, so this is your this is your i b right i b also lags from v b n by angle 30 degree. Similarly, if you see the I C R C also lags from V C N by uh, the sorry uh, I B lags from V B N by theta and I C also lags from this one your what you call your uh, by an angle theta right. Now, this is let me clear it now actually diagram is uh, uh, hold on hold on I will reduce the zoom just hold on. So, in this case just uh, just hold on. So, in this case your this is my V B C if I want V C B just 180 degree phase shift just make other way opposite way this is my V C B right. Now, if we want that angle should be in between V C B I C and V C B. So, this angle that angle between your V C B right and this V B look here V A your what you call V A B and V N is 30 degree then similarly your V your what you call V, v c v c a right here it is v a b and v n similarly here it is v c a and v c n angle your what you call will be 30 degree like this. So, if you look into that that this is my v c n right this is my v c n and this is my i c. So, angle between v c n and i c is theta because i c actually current is lagging from this one because it is balanced say we have taken balance. So, this is angle theta right and angle between this thing that is your v c n and v c b is 30 degree like your v a b and v a n is 30 degree just we have taken the opposite right v c b. So, this angle is 30 degree. So, that means, this angle will be 30 degree minus theta. So, this angle is 30 degree minus theta then what watt meter reading for that second watt meter reading if p 2 is given p 2 should be equal to it is v c b then your i c then your cosine 30 degree minus theta right. So, this is my V c, but this is a magnitude this is also magnitude. So, V c b is equal to V l I c is equal to I l it will be cos third cos 30 degree minus theta right. So, this is that reading of the second watt meter right. So, let me clear it. So, let me increase the zoom. So, this is what this is what the your reading of the second watt meter. So, it should be V c b into I c into cos 30 degree minus theta right. So, that is that is what has been made here P 2 is equal to V c b I c into cos your and your cos minus theta is equal to cos theta. 
so it is written cos 30 degree minus theta is equal to cos theta minus 30 degree right or we can write p2 is equal to is a magnitude only line to line voltage so vcb is equal to vl il cos theta minus 30 degree this is equation 2 then total watt meter reading add equation 1 and 2 if you do so p1 plus p2 and simplify you will see it will become root 3 vl il cos theta and total that means pt is pt actually is a total power so it will be root 3 vl il cos theta this is your equation 3 this is the your whatever mathematically whatever we are derived watt meter is reading the same thing it is reading the same thing right similarly if you subtract equation 1 from equation 2 right that is equation 2 minus equation 1 you will get p2 minus p1 is equal to vlil sin theta right or if you multiply both side by root 3 then root 3 vlil sin theta is equal to root 3 into p2 minus p uh, minus p1 right therefore qt is equal to root 3 into p2 minus p1 because this is my total reactive power root 3 vlil sin theta so that is my qt is equal to root 3 p2 minus p1 this is equation 4 right therefore root 3 vlil cos theta is equal to p1 plus p2 and root 3 vlil sin theta is equal to root 3 p2 minus p1 so divide the divide this uh, this one uh, your this one by this one if you do then it will be tan theta is equal to root 3 p2 minus 1 upon p2 plus 1 now if theta is positive then it is inductive that means if p2 greater than p1 load is inductive if p2 less than p1 load is capacitive right so if p2 minus p1 positive means load is inductive otherwise if p2 minus p1 negative means load is capacitive right so here it is given if p2 is equal to p1 resistive load that means theta is equal to 0 right that means resistive load if p2 greater than p1 it is inductive load if p2 less than p1 it is capacitive load so from there you can determine right now after this you take one example this this is example 6 that what meter is something i have connected like this w1 w2 and w3 an interesting thing this thing we have intentionally taken that this load is unbalanced because z a is simply 15 ohm similarly z b is 10 plus j 5 ohm and z c is 6 minus j 8 ohm so you have what we have to do is we have to measure the power phase basis right so here it is unbal unbalanced unbalanced thing is given and intentionally i have taken this example right intentionally i have taken this example and this is 15 ohm this is your 6 minus j 8 ohm that is your z c and this side i'll show you the diagram and this side is your your z b 10 plus j 1 and one watt meter is connected like this similarly another watt meter is your what you call connected like this right so in this case your what you call and this is the neutral so we want to measure your what you call the power phase power power phase basis right so this is the current i a this is i b this is i c and some current is flowing to the neutral and right and this is your what you call unbalanced thing we have taken now in this case your predict the watt meter readings find the total power absorbed right so it is unbalanced we have taken so in that case your what you call that you find out your first i a i b and i c you find out so it did and it is because your what you call it is given a c b sequence a c b sequence that means balanced phase voltage is 100 volt right if you look into that it is given that balanced phase voltage it is given that is a 100 volt that phase voltage is balanced if by ACB sequence, but load is unbalanced, load is unbalanced. So, VAN is taken 100 angle 0 and as it is ACB sequence, so VCN is 100 angle minus 120 and VBN is equal to 100 angle 120 degree, right. Now, IA is equal to for your phase A 100 angle 0 by 15, it is 6.67 angle 0 degree ampere. Similarly, for phase B, it is 100 angle 120 divided by 10 plus j 5 it is 8.94 angle 93.44 degree ampere similarly for phase c 100 angle minus 120 divided by 6 minus j 8 it will be 10 angle minus 66.87 degree ampere here it is right so this is your your find out i a is equal to v n upon this one similarly for i your i b is equal to v b n upon this one similarly for i c n is equal to v c n upon this one similarly you can find out the phase wise right so, once you do this, now I n is equal to minus of I a plus I b plus I c. So, if you do your I a plus I b plus I c, right all phasor sum, 
if you do it will become 10.06 angle 178.4 degree ampere right and for watt meter reading power p1 it will be v n i a into cos theta v n minus i a that means that means your for this watt meter it is connected here it is it is connected in this thing and it, and uh, between this one and this neutral it is connected right so it is what it will do that voltage v n magnitude you will take v n then you will take the current i a then angle between this voltage that is your i right cosine of theta v n that is the angle of v n minus theta of i a right this way it is written just for easy understanding right therefore if you if you see this if you see this that your p1 is equal to v n a i a cosine theta v n minus theta i a theta v n is 0 reference 1 and theta i a also 0. So, it is becoming 667 watt. Similarly, for p 2 it will be v b n into i b just look at the diagram and just write it cosine of it is angle of theta v b n is 120 degree and angle of i b is 93.44 degree this is a power factor angle actually the difference is a power factor angle. So, it is 800 watt. Similarly, for p 3 v c n i c into cos theta v c this is angle of your your what you call that v c n is minus 120 and angle of your i c it will be minus 66.87. So, here in this plus right. So, it will become 600 watt right. Therefore, the total power absorbed is p t is equal to p 1 plus p 2 plus p 3. So, 2000 your 67 watt this is the answer right. Now, another thing is p t is equal to i a square into r a resistance of the phase a is r a is your plus i b square r b the resistance of your um, phase b then i c square r c right. If you just make all mal magnitude right I just so if you just put all these values all the magnitude of this current and the resistive value you will get 2067 watt here also 2067 watt. So, it is matching right. So, answers are correct. So, hope you have understood this right. So, example another example you take the three phase balance load in figure 29 has your z star is equal to 8 plus j 6 ohm. If the load is connected to 200 volt uh, a 200 volt lines predict the readings of w 1 and w 2 also find p t and q t right. So, it is actually figure 29. So, if we come back to figure 29 it is here this is uh, just hold on I will just the same figure where, where we have derived the formula right this is figure 30 and this is your this is the figure in this figure right. So, this is the figure you take this figure and data are given there right. So, we will come back to this. So, here so the impedance is given star connected load uh, that is 8 plus j 6 ohm and line to line voltage is 208 volt right we have to find out w 1 and w 2 and p t and q t. So, we know z star 8 plus j 6 will be t an angle 36.87 degree ohm right line voltage is 208 volt therefore, line current will be just uh, your it is your star connected. So, your v p upon z y right. So, that is your v p phase voltage because it is line to this is your what you call that uh, your line to line voltage is given uh, 208. So, phase voltage will be line voltage by root 3 magnitude j i just we are making the magnitude. So, it is given 208. So, root 3 into 10 magnitude here it is 10 impedance is 10. So, I l magnitude is 12 ampere right. Therefore, P 1 is equal to V l I l cos 30 degree plus theta and this theta is equal to 36.87 degree. So, this is your theta is equal to here it is written here 36.87 degree. Therefore, P 1 is equal to 208 current magnitude is uh, line current we got 12 right into cosine 30 plus 36.87 degree. So, P 1 is equal to 980.48 watt. Similarly, P 2 is equal to V l I l cosine 30 degree minus theta. So, it will be P 2 V l is 208 I l we have got 12 30 minus 36.87 degree. So, it is 2478.1 watt. Now, now we can see the P 2 greater than P 1 means it is inductive load because already we have seen it is inductive only. So, P 2 greater than P 1 and total power P t is equal to this is P t total power is equal to P 1 plus P 2. If you add this it will be actually 3.4586 kilowatt you add and divide by 1000 you will get it kilowatt right. 
Now q t is equal to root 3 into p 2 minus p 1. So, this root 3 into p 2 minus p 1 will become 1497.6 because you have got p 2 you make p 2 minus your p 1 right. You will get this directly I am writing 1497.6 bar. So, it is actually 2.594 kilo bar right and this is one exercise for you you will do it answers are given this exercise you will do it for you right and it has it is load is delta right and it is capacitive so you solve it answers are also given so you can verify. Now, this is a very interesting problem. So, just uh, let me let me reduce the zoom little bit right. So, in this problem that two balance load are connected to a 240 kilo volt it is frequency 60 hertz line as shown in figure 32 I will show you the figure 32 load 1 draws 30 kilowatt at a power factor of 0 0.6 lagging if 30 kilowatt is given. So, from this power factor you can find out also it is reactive power absorbed right load reactive power also because power factor is given while load 2 draws 45 kilowatt at power factor of 0 0.8 lagging it is problem here it is twisted. So, here it is given 45 kilowatt, but power factor is given 0.8 that means here you have to find out p and for the here you have to find out the q right and therefore, you have to determine first one the complex real and reactive power absorbed by the load and b the line currents and c the kilowatt rating of the your what you call three capacitors uh, which are uh, con delta connected in parallel with load right that I will show you to raise the power factor to 0 0.9 lagging and also the value of C p right. So, this is the thing now question is that let us go to the your what you call the diagram. So, if you see the diagram actually this is the diagram. So, question is that that here little bit you have to understand right. So, loads are there. So, this is the three line A B C this is the three lines are there right and these loads are connected this is the balanced load 1 and this is the balance 2 loads are connected. So, this is without capacitor suppose it is connected. Now, these capacitors are connected in delta form this is given just you see yourself that how actually things are connected right. So, now course in the here in the problem it is mentioned that in the it problem it is mentioned that that your the KBR rating of the three capacitors delta connected in parallel with the load to raise the power factor 0 point line lagging. So, its power factor whatever combined power factor is given that is different issue but you have to raise the power factor right and the power factor of the your what you call the first load is 0 0.6 lagging and the for second load also it is your 0 0.8 lagging right. So, this is or uh, this is what you call it is given. So, that is in the figure 32 this is your figure 32. So, this capacitor thing we will consider later. So, question is that that this is my current I A this is I A I B. So, this I A then uh, this current is uh, I some part is going to I A 1 and going to I A 2 this we will see later this we will see later right. So, question is and this is balance load 1 balance load 2. So, it is a basically parallel parallel uh, circuit right 3 phase it is a parallel circuit and this is the your problem. So, now very easy it is just see. So, that means your I A is equal to I A 1 plus I A 2 and similarly I B I C that 120 degree uh, phase shift you can easily make out because it is balance system. So, magnitude will be the same right. So, I A is equal to I A 1 plus I 2 from K C L right. So, that means, uh, so, So, that means, load 1 P 1 is equal to 30 kilowatt cos theta 1 0.6 that means, sin theta 1 is equal to 0.8. So, S 1 is equal to apparent power P 1 upon cos theta 1 it will be 50 kVA right and Q 1 will be S 1 sin theta 1 it will be 50 into 0.8 40 kilo bar. Therefore, P 1 plus J Q 1 will be 30 plus J 40 kilo volt ampere right in terms of kVA. Similarly, for load 2 problem is twisted right here it is q 2 is equal to 45 kilo bar is given we have to obtain p. So, lagging power factor is given lagging means current is lagging. So, cos theta 2 is equal to 0 0.8 then sin theta 2 is equal to 0 0.6 therefore, s 2 is equal to q 2 upon sin theta 2 that is 45 by 0 0.6 is equal to 75 kVA right. Therefore, p 2 is equal to s 2 cos theta 2 75 into 0 0.8 is so 60 kilowatt. Therefore, p 2 plus j q 2 is equal to 60 plus j 45 kVA right. Now, total complex power 
p plus j q will be p 1 plus p 2 plus j q 1 plus q 2 it will become 90 plus j 85 k v a right. Therefore, p plus j q will be you take the square root of 90 square plus 85 square you will get 123.8 and angle will be 43.360 degree k v a right. So, that means it is your b v i cos theta plus j v i sin theta form right. So, now this is your p k v a and uh, right 123.8 k v a the apparent power. Now, now question is now the root 3 we know that root 3 v l i l 1 cos theta 1 is equal to p l on p on right. So, i l 1 is equal to 30 we got and this is in kilowatt this is in kilowatt and this your what you call the root 3 into 240 your kilo volt into 0.6 right. So, it will become actually 120.28 milli ampere right this we are written as kilowatt. So, it is also kilo volt right. So, if you solve it it will be 120.28 milli ampere and theta 1 is equal to cos inverse 0 0.6 53.13 degree and current is lagging therefore, 120.28 angle minus 53.1 degree milli ampere. So, current is lagging. Similarly, for I L 2 it will be 60 upon root 3 into 240 into 0 0.8 it is milli ampere 180.42 milli ampere 60 is in kilowatt and this is in kilo volt. So, ultimately it will convert uh, ultimately it will become ampere from that you write in milli ampere form it will be 180. 0.42 milli ampere and theta 2 will be 36.86 degrees lagging. Therefore, I A 2 will be 180.42 angle minus 36.87 degree milli ampere right. Therefore, total current the KCL I told you apply I A will be equal to I A 1 plus I 2. So, it will be if you simplify it will be 297.8 angle minus 43.36 degree milli ampere right. Therefore, I B is equal to just 120 degree phase shift I A angle minus 120 degree it will become 297.8 angle 163.36 degree milli ampere. Similarly, I C is equal to I A angle 120 degree it will become 297.8 uh, angle 76.6 degree uh, 64 degree milli ampere. So, here you have got your what you call that uh, your I A you got this I A here and here you substitute you are getting the magnitude will remain same. Right. Now, Q C is equal to this one, this one is a very simple thing that Q C will be P tan theta volt a P into tan theta volt minus tan theta nu. So, this one how we have got it this is look cos theta we want to improve the power factor to 0 0.9 therefore, theta nu is equal to 25.85 degree right and this we got it this is a small exercise I am leaving up to you, you please do it right you draw a triangle power triangle and from there you find out the expression of Q C right you draw a power triangle and you do yourself. So, this one I am leaving up to you right. So, Q C will be 41.4 kilowatt and, and another thing is there the capacitor C P value not computed here it is a delta connected capacitor from this also you try to find out what is the value of C P right the capacitor in microfarad that answer is not given here but I suggest you please do it and this one is a very simple thing you do it of your own right. Next is the measurement of reactive power using the same watt meter right. I mean using the your same watt meter you measure the your what you call the your reactive power in this case let me let me reduce the zoom little bit. In this case what happened that your uh, uh, sometimes you will find sometimes you will find this is uh, that current coil should be put in one phase and pressure coil should be connected across other phase right. Sometimes we will write that a, your what you call watt meter like m m l then this is your main side this is your load side c and v sometimes we write like this, but at the resistance is very high. So, whatever current will be flowing here almost current will be same current will be flowing here right, but anyway. So, this this current your what you call uh, this here to measure the reactive power using the same watt meter you put the current coil in one phase. Suppose, in phase a I have put the current coil which sees the current I a and the pressure coil that is C b it is connected to your what you call that other other two phases that is b and c right. Then this will actually give you the reactive power the question uh, we have to find out how. So, this is my z y z y z y right this is a and a same thing this is actually it is same thing it is small a this is your small c 
and this is your small v same thing. So, I a this same current is flowing here I a is equal to V n angle 0 this is your V a and this is n means small n same thing right. Same, I mean meaning is same. So, there should not be any confusion right. So, I n will be V n angle 0 by z y that this is your uh, V n angle 0 then divided by say z theta. So, it will be V n angle z angle your minus theta this is your I a right. Similarly, for I b and I c now question is how it will be uh, if you connect this how it uh, what is the value of then the active power how you are doing it. Then in this case you draw the phasor diagram. Now, suppose this is your this is your V a B this is your V a B right and this is my V n right and current lags from V n by angle theta, but watt meter actually it uh, the for your this thing for this diagram if you look into that watt meter C is actually the current current I A current I A and it sees the voltage your what you call V B C and it will take angle between V B C and I A right because it is it is seeing V this pressure coil is connected actually B C so it measures the voltage V B C and the I A and the angle between the I A and V B C that we need. So, that means that means here in the phasor diagram this is my V A B this is my V A N right and I L lags by theta and this is V B C V A B angle between V A B and V B C is 120 degree you know. So, this the, your what you call between V A N and V B C angle is 90 degree this angle is theta. So, this angle is 90 degree minus theta right therefore, that watt meter reading will be the magnitude of the V B C and magnitude of the current I A, I have put I occasionally I have put bar sometimes does not uh, put bar did not put bar, but I told you this is magnitude and cos that angle between I A and V B C is 90 degree minus theta. So, cos 90 degree minus theta that means, watt meter reading, reading will be V L I L sin theta right, but our reactive power is root 3 V L I L sin theta that means, this reading has to be multiplied by root 3 to get the correct reading. Right. So, this way what same watt meter you can use for measuring the reactive power right. So, that, that means, the watt meter can be so calibrated that it indicates 3 phase reactive power by having a multiplication factor of root 3. That means, if you want same watt meter the reading that watt meter has to be calibrated by multiplying a factor root 3 that is that the scale is there no that those all these things has to be multiplied by root 3. So, whatever reading you get you just multiply by root 3 you will get your what you call that your reactive power right. So, this is the that is why this is the connection of the watt meter uh, for getting your what you call that your uh, reactive power same watt meter you can use. So, with this this exercise is one exercise given this problem I have got from some book. So, suppose this A B C all of a sudden this uh, your this uh, phase is open right. So, this is minus the 100 ohm this is 100 ohm and A B C all these things are given you have to find out V O V that what is the voltage V open circuit voltage V O V. So, find V O V given that the system is 208 volt and A B C is equals 208 volt means it is line to line right and answer is given 284 angle 150 degree volt answer is correct you try to find out very simple problem, but very interesting problem right. Another exercise is this uh, line currents in a 3 phase 3 wire 220 volt A B C system I A is equal to is given, I B is given, I C is given. Find the readings of watt meter in lines 1 A and B and the readings if you, if you put watt meter in B and C and A. So, I mean you connect the watt meter in line A and B and find out the reading, you connect the watt meter B and C find out the reading, you connect the watt meter A and C find out the reading and all these answers are given all the and, and you your what you call and you find out why these readings are different right. Now, before the before uh, you are uh, closing this three phase circuit one or two things I will tell you I mean here itself I am telling you. Suppose sometimes it is given suppose if it is given that impedance of a circuit suppose if it is given that j is equal to say root j ohm it is given then what is the value of r what is the value of x right. So, if it is given then what is r what is x suppose this is given and somebody is ask you that j impedance is root over z. So, what is the what will be the 
your what you call that r value and x value look j is equal to you can write 0 plus 1 into j this we write that means 0 is equal to you can write cos pi by 2 right and 1 you can write j this j is there j sin pi by 2 right that means you can write this one actually e to the power j pi by 2 right that means my j is equal to your e to the power j pi by 2 this is class 11 complex number right therefore therefore root j means so j that means j is equal to the power j pi by 2 let me clear it that means that means your uh, your uh, j is equal to root j is equal to j to the power half so j is equal to e to the power your uh, j pi by 2 to the power half right is equal to e to the power j pi by 4 right is equal to it is cos pi by 4 plus j sin pi by 4 right is equal to 1 upon root 2 plus j 1 upon root 2 that means your r is equal to 1 upon root 2 ohm and your x is equal to also 1 upon root 2 ohm right so this is how calculate now another thing is another thing is with that only suppose if somebody ask you that your what is the value of j to the power j j we have seen just now we have seen j is equal to e to the power j pi by 2 to the power j that means e to the power j square pi by 2 right that that is, is equal to actually j square is minus 1 so e to the power minus pi by it is a real number right that means that means my j to the power j to the power j is a real number it is e to the power minus pi by 2 right so little bit a uh, little bit uh, uh, i mean uh, mathematical thing uh, just uh, just uh, just i have told you right so with this thank you very much that three phase uh, three phase your ac circuit part is over next we will take the magnetic circuits and after that a uh, little bit of single phase transformer then little bit of three phase induction machines and dc machines so thank you very much